I was so happy when I heard the president of the North American Division talking about exponential multiplication because this is not just a good slogan. It is biblical. It is God's dream for each of us, for every family, for every ministry, for every congregation and church organization. The Lord bless us with the capacity to be fruitful and multiply. It's an exponential capacity. It has no limits. The scripture said, God bless them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. To Abraham, the Lord said, I will bless you in such a way that you will be like the stars in heaven and like the sun and dust on the earth. At one point in the life of the Israelites, Moses could say to them, the Lord has multiplied you as the stars in heaven. And he added, may the Lord multiply you a thousand times more and bless you. God's dream was fulfilled also in the early church. They experienced a multiplication of disciples, multiplication of churches in such a way that in one generation, Paul could declare the gospel that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. Not even the might of the Roman Empire could stop that wave of exponential multiplication. And we know that in the same way, God's dream would be fulfilled in his remnant church for the last commission, the last advertising of the world that Jesus is coming soon. My question is, are we closer or farther away? The night is nearly over, says the Bible. The day is almost here. Evil is multiplying. The speed of evil multiplication is accelerating exponentially. Immorality, injustices, materialism, selfishness, disaster, diseases, pandemic, wars, etc. Yes, the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. There are no doubts. There, nevertheless, even though evil is yelling loudly, Jesus is coming soon, there is only one thing that marks the end. Jesus said, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. From this perspective, are we closer or farther away? In 2010, the population of U.S. reached 310 million. Ten years later, 2020, the population grew to 331 million. 21 more millions. In the same period, the North American uh, division experienced also growth. Over 300,000 new brothers and sisters were other to the kingdom of heaven. But it crushes me. The reality that we are not getting closer, but rather farther away. What is wrong? What we are missing? Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. There is nothing wrong with the harvest. The problem is not because of an ideology or a postmodern mentality or the rampant materialism and secularism. Jesus defined the problem saying the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ellen G. White said, if men in humble life were encouraged to do all the good that they could do, if restraining hands were not laid upon them to repress their seal, there would be a hundred workers for Christ where now there is one. Even more, in the steps to Christ, she says, there would be thousands where there is one today. Thousands where there is one today. I was taught that in order to have a healthy church, the 10% of membership should have the spiritual gift of evangelism. And nothing wrong with that. But the problem is to limit it and strategize mission on just the basis of those who have the spiritual gift of evangelism. Historically, we have carried out the mission on the basis of the professional team, the evangelist, the Bible instructors, and all the team. 
So in the best possible case, the 90% of the believers are just spectators. How we can expect to win the war depending only on the lead forces? We need the whole army. It is an imperative to engage the whole infantry. At the same time, there is a very common mistake to pretend to engage all the believers in doing mission as, on, as only those who receive the spiritual evangelism, the spiritual gift of evangelism, can do. According to Jesus, the Great Commission will be accomplished on the basis of witnessing. And this gospel, as we have read, of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Ellen G. White says, we can bear witness to what we have known of the grace of Christ. This is the witness for which our Lord calls and for want of which the world is perishing. Even more, the Spirit was promised to empower disciples to witness. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit will come on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And finally, at the battle, the most cruel battle, the final battle between evil and good, those who will overcome will, will overcome on the basis of these two grounds. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So why is so essential, so important in our Christian life? Witnessing. Witnessing is God's way to transform our lives and prepare ourselves to be part of his kingdom. Ellen G. White says the only way to grow in grace. She added, those who reject the privilege of fellowship with Christ in service reject the only training that imparts a fitness for participation with him in his glory. In this way, witnessing is God's love in action. The essence of Christ's only method which gives success is to show God's love to those who are around us. That's why witnessing is an imperative an essential need in the process of sanctification. It, it is not a gift. It is a need. As much as we witness for Christ, as much as we are transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ, in this way, God's character becomes our character. Esmeralda was a humble lady invited to uh, our Festival of Evangelism celebrated at the very end of 2017 in Ocean City. She was not baptized, but at that occasion she felt God's call to make her home a center of hope and salvation for her friends. So as soon as she arrived home, she called her pastor and said, Pastor, I want to be baptized because I committed myself to make a small group in my home. When her husband, Jose, heard about her decision to be baptized, he also took the decision. That was her first soul led to Christ by witnessing. Just a few weeks ago, I received a picture showing Esmeralda with seven friends and family who were baptized. And with these seven people, in the last three years, she led a total of 25 friends and family members. Amazing story. But the most surprising is that she never gave a Bible study. She is not able to preach, but she did what the Lord Jesus Christ commanded us to do, witnessing. Because a true disciple is an instrument of God's love. He prays and works to become God's love in action. 
And doing that, he leads his friends to Christ. Can we start praying like Jesus encouraged us to pray? Lord, send us more workers into your harvest field. Let us not stop and rest until we see every believer under their circle of our influence engage in witnessing, in sharing God's love to those who are around them. Then we will see an exponential multiplication. Because exponential multiplication is not just a slogan. It's the very way that Jesus intended to finish his mission on earth.